Anupalevi Muparti, or ANU for short, alumna of UC San Diego's Computer Science and Engineering Department, and a front-end engineer at what is universally regarded as the heart of visionary tech, Google. But mostly, she is a person you will not forget. So, I have to tell you the story first. Um, I was an intern at Amazon, Seattle, uh, five years ago, and I was given housing in this Skyrise building, Aspira, and in the middle of the night there was a fire alarm that went off. And I had this five-year-old girl and three-year-old boy, and of course I have to take all these stairs. Guess what I first picked up? My backpack that had my laptop, and then I'm shoving this hard drive into it. Why? Because it has the photos of my kids since they were born. Like every month, at the end of the month, I upload May 2007, June 2007. Then I put that on my backpack, pick both those kids up and, and run down the stairs. I don't worry about the hard drive anymore. I work on Google Photos. It's like this photos and videos service provided by Google. It's to store and to share. There are three components to it. Uh, part one is the actual storage, where, you, where they're auto-backed up photos that you take on your phone, these countless of photos, and they're all backed up automatically, and they're all like in a safe place. Nobody's looking at them unless I give them permission to. Um, I always have them. They could be a fire alarm. My phone could be lost. I, I still have my photos in a safe place. So that's part one. Part two, searching. I don't have to go through this infinite scroll. Hold on, in 2006 in Hawaii, I was wearing this blue hat and I don't have to do that anymore. Just enter that Google, the search king, the search queen. So just enter your words and then all the pictures of me wearing a, a blue hat in Hawaii in 2007 or whatever it is show up. It's easy to search, easy to share. And then you're like, okay, I want to share this, 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 this with my mom and these with my professor, these with my friend. So that's the second component, the searching and sharing. And the third component is, yes, you have your photos and they're all your memories and you hold on to them and you can share them. You still want to be surprised. So it's, it's nice, like, you get this card once, once in a while saying, hey, do you remember what you were doing five years ago? You were here doing this. Or look how, old, how much older your kids are now. Like, look how much they've grown. So there's these um, magical movies that are made, auto videos that are made, these collages that are made. So that's the third component. So I work on the desktop side. So whatever the user sees, when you go to photos.google.com, the photos grids and, the, and you can select, you can see all the albums, you can see all the photos, you can see all the settings. All that is basically what my team works on. I'm also one of its biggest fans. So it's, it's nice that I work on a, on a product that's so user facing. So when I explain to people at back home to my father or something, I don't have to talk in abstract terms. You know, when, I, when this happens and it goes faster and you can't see it, none of those. It's like, this is what I work on. Bring out the phone. You see these buttons? I make those buttons happen. And when you click, so yeah, I work on Google Photos and I, I, I love it. The path to her Google career was not typical, or as one might imagine, the path that device-savvy, gaming-saturated youngsters long adept at Scratch and Minecraft would follow. Um, I grew up in India, uh, in a city called Hyderabad. Uh, my, my parents were separated when I was little. Um, I've, I'm, I'm very close to my father. He's, 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 I don't know, it's a cliche, like he's my mentor, my friend, my advisor. He was not an engineer, uh, but he did love math. And uh, every, every time I lost a point in one of my math tests, he would put me to shame and say, okay, what happened? None of my uh, upbringing was related to CS directly, but there was this problem-solving mindset, like looking at something and then breaking it down, like this modular way of thinking where I'm like, okay, so this I can break it down into the six pieces, and then this piece looks like piece two from that one, and then like being able to see patterns and putting them together. So that's exactly programming too, when I think of it as just building blocks of an if statement and a while loop and these variables and things like that. So I guess I did have that form of thinking, the logical way and like trying to solve a problem and trying to break it down and trying to look for patterns. But it was not like very computer science specific in any way. But the engineering mindset was, was in place. I, I don't think I was prepared in any way for a field in computer science on day one at UCSD. I think, I think my son, my nine-year-old, knows a lot more about computer science at that point of time when I joined UCSD. So computer science-wise, I did not know anything. And when I did enroll at UCSD, I went through this huge imposter syndrome. I, I still do, even now. It's like, I am at the wrong place. These people are so much smarter. And they, they've played with computers their entire life. I did not have the luxury to make school a priority at that point of time. Um, I was a single mom. I had two kids under the age of three. 
I had no family here in the US. Um, not anyone I could count on, not even a distant cousin. And classes were not like a nine to five. You'd have, you'd have class at 6 p.m., you'd have class at 7 p.m. And what do you do with two kids? So I would frequently go to classes with my kids, one in a sling and one in tow. Um, I've been in situations where um, I've had a three month old in a baby beyond with me and um, the kid was being fussy and the class, I think, I was maybe one of the, uh, the only one, uh, the only girl in the class, if not one of two. And um, I would, the, the door, it was a glass door, so I would sit outside the classroom and while I nursed my son, I would let's just copy down whatever the professor was writing on the board with no idea what he was saying. Then I'd go home and read over the book and then look at my notes and, oh, so this makes sense and this is what he was trying to explain. So transcribe my own notes. So, um, yeah, I, it was, looking back, I think it was, it was an interesting time. And uh, I was the one who had those kids like sleeping on a blanket in the lab while I'm coding like at 12 p.m. or at 1 a.m. So there were so many days I wanted to give up. I, unlike others, I, I did not see, I did not dream of a future five years from now. I, I, survival was my only thing. I'm like, okay, today is done, tomorrow will be a new day. So. I don't think I would have bet on myself uh, with two kids or taking a voucher to get a carton of milk. Um, but someone did bet on her, and she went on to earn both her bachelor's and master's degrees from UC San Diego. She shares about the special role the computer science and engineering department played in her success, the place it occupies in her heart, and what it means to her future. I did not have a family right when I was here, so tutors were my family. There are these bonds that are formed among those groups. There was this comfort and the support and the encouragement that you get. And so people wanted to be tutors. And once you're a tutor, you're just, it's like this googliness in Google, right? It's not something that you can touch, but yet it exists, the, the myth of googliness. You just, you just want to be better and you want to leave the world in a better state than it was for having you in it. I don't think I would, have, I would be what I am if I did not, if I wasn't a tutor or if I did not have the TA family. They, they held me up. There were days when I would like, I, I cannot do this anymore and they had this hand behind me saying, yes, you can and we are all there to cheer you. And sometimes it was harsh talk, oh, come on, you can do it. Or, or sometimes it was like, I know it's hard, but you can still do it. Those, those, that was important. And then the, there's, there's also the tangible support, the, the student advisors on the first floor, they're rock stars. You go to them with a problem and then you go again four months later and they would ask, so how's, is this okay or is it still happening? Or like, they bonded with you and, and that helps. You're not just a number, you were a person. And then the professors, I have walked into professors' rooms and dropped a kid in front of them telling them, can you please give them a piece of paper and pen? I'll be back. I'm going to go take a quiz and I'll be back. And they were sure. Who does that? I had Professor Victor Viano tell me, you have a test tomorrow. My daughter can babysit your kid if you want. She's a good girl. She's 13 or 14 or maybe even a little older, but she's a good girl. Who says that? He's a professor. He has so many awards. I was his TA. He owes me nothing. I strongly believe that our department is unique and the school is... The, the, the CSC is awesome, the department at, at UCSD. They've taught me to realize what I know and to also realize what I do not know. It's important to know what I don't know because unless I know that, I wouldn't know to A, look for resources or B, ask for help or C, try to learn. So that was the biggest thing that UCSD uh, taught me, like to differentiate what you know, what you do not know. And when you do not know, what do you do? How to be resourceful. And that's exactly what's transferred here. I haven't stopped learning a single day. There's never a day I go to work saying, I know it all and I'm gonna like code it. So as I'm driving, I'm still like, huh, how, maybe I could have thought of it this way. How else could I have done it? So as long as I have that learning curve every day, I think I'm gonna stay in Google Photos. If, if I do end up at Google 10 years from now, I'd still like to be able to learn, be able to go to work feeling excited and leave work thinking that I've learned something new today, every single day. I'd like to teach someday. I'd like to teach computer science someday. Not today, 
but perhaps 10 years from now i'd like to be teaching either it would be a i'm a, i'm working for google and teaching perhaps that will lend me some credibility when i'm teaching or uh, or perhaps i'm just teaching full time but i'd like to teach computer science um to help people realize that this is an awesome field and that it's so powerful a news a typical path to success offers unique insights what advice does she have for women especially those like her who never dreamed of this career so women pursuing computer science i was never conscious of the fact that i'm a girl so i should not be good at math it's acceptable for me to be a little behind in math or things like that so there was this um encouraging fact from my dad like he never let me be uh, sell myself short because i was a girl do not give up because of your gender or because of your back if i i i could do it i mean any person in the world could do it now women do tend to hesitate more to make a mistake and it's okay to make mistakes computer science it's like it's so easy you just it's it's programming you can you can always fix it they're always fix it um don't be afraid to make mistakes do not be afraid to question to ask like chances are the others are going to be happy that you asked that question so and don't confuse experience with smartness like when i joined google i was like these people are so smart and and they are they are very smart but they also have had experience they've been here for like 3 years or 4 years so um women tend to go through more of the imposter syndrome so i say don't do that stick with it stick with the program go through it it's there's this to for success there's this hard work times determination times knowledge like there are many factors that help right so if you're lacking in knowledge it's okay your hard work will help and then you increase or decrease them and then um you will succeed the other thing that i'm going to uh, that i would recommend uh, women is form study groups form bonds form make allies they don't have to be all women and it helps to initially get your voice learn 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 ask people read books ask for help ask questions so i would say yes stick with it the world is so much more different now than it was 10 years ago this the companies are realizing the importance of women in tech and they provide daycares maternity leaves so the world is trying to meet you too then don't give up keep moving anu never stopped moving never gave up though she never dreamed she would be where she is and she reflects on what and who helped her get here i never saw myself at google and i did it because of ucsd csc it doesn't matter if i was smart or if i was hard working i i could not have done it without ucsd csc these are real people and and they want the students to succeed they want us to do well if anything they rejoice in your successes and they do not laugh at your failures they think what can we do to help you there are innumerable people that i could thank I hope they know who they are. And, and I hope they know that I carry a piece of their advice and their encouragement with me every day. And uh, I hope they still feel proud of me. And I'm going to try to do what I can to make sure they do feel that way. And that's it.